Okay, so the first slide over here, slide four, talks about modeling. So modeling is like a fancy word, but essentially all it is trying to say is that uh, we are uh, going to visualize some information and create some um, uh, models to uh, summarize complex information. So modeling involves representing information visually in a structured format. The objective of the models is to convey information in clear and concise manner. So, so far what we've done is we have done, gone through the uh, document, um, sorry, requirements elicitation activities, right? We've gathered the requirements. We have gone through the brainstorming. We first initially conducted some field analysis by conducting um, formal informal interviews, maybe some questionnaire surveys we got filled out. We, we gave our subject matter experts chance to do some individual thinking. Uh, about the solutions or the proposals that they had in mind. Then we got into a group think session. We did some brainstorming where we did divergence exercises. Then we did our requirements workshop or JAD sessions where we did the convergence exercises to come up with some final proposed solution. Now, that much we have done so far. Our end objective is to get our business requirement document signed off. DRD sign off is what we're focusing on. Um, and modeling comes somewhere in the middle where we have gathered uh, some amount of uh, information, but because we are the business analyst, we are sort of sitting in the middle to do translation. When we work with our business users, um, some information is quite complex to explain. Like in the meeting, things become, uh, there, there is a saying, right? A picture uh, says a thousand words. In meetings, we say that people are just talking and talking and um, uh, debating about certain topics. It becomes hard to sometimes conceptualize. And if we make a small little drawing, a model, um, there are many types of models, many categories of models, many different diagramming techniques. Um, so let's say we draw a simulating diagram. Then uh, it is easier for our users to uh, um, follow the flow of information, some type of workflow. Um, so we will learn about different categories of models. Uh, so this slide is a little busy and it has a lot of words thrown into it, partially because you need some of this terminology for your interview or for the ECG exam. This is all babok aligned terminology. So little bit theory is there, uh, but uh, bear with me for a moment. It will become clearer as we go along. So. Think of um, uh, computer ar architecture as being three tier architecture, three layers are there. One is uh, data visualization layer, which we call graphical user interface, GUI in the layer. Middle tier is like central processing unit, some type of business calculations or formulas or some business logic is going on. And the third layer is the database layer, where this is called the persistent layer, where the information is saved to the database. So you are saving, you are retrieving, you're doing some calculations and showing some information to the user. So back and forth we go, up and down, up and down, and it's called three-tier architecture. Uh, so that is three layers of a cake, you can think like that. Um, but there are also, uh, if you talk to the technology team, they sometimes also try to um, count the three layers vertically, meaning there is inbound information, there is central processing going on, there is outbound information. So we have inputs, we have some central processing going on, and then we have outputs. So these are also called upstream processes, calculations, and downstream processes. Either way, it's just like a nine-point grid, you can think of it like that. Sometimes we will be talking in terms of the vertical layer, sometimes in terms of the horizontal layer. But the three-layer architecture still remains the same. Conceptually, only that much is there. How? So that's the English way to understand it. Now, the same nine components can have lots of fancy names. So only those names we will memorize, but the concept remains the same. So in terms of modeling, the layers go like this. Scope model, process model, data model. Scope model means, uh, what is the scope? So like in a GPS, we have um, satellite view, and then maybe a little bit of a closer view, and then the street view, just like that. So scope diagram, the scope model means context diagram means your current state diagram, future state diagram, and the steps to get you get you there. That's that's what we mean by context diagram, the topmost layer. 
process model is something about the internal workflow of the information. That is the central processing unit. What is the business logic of your application? And those diagrams, uh, uh, those process models, uh, examples of process models are flowchart and CMS. And the third one is data model, which is the SQL database model. So data flow diagram we will also uh, cover in our uh, material. So uh, again, three types of layers. Scope models are referring to the topmost high-level view. Process models are related to the internal processing or the workflow. And data flow models are how we are saving data to the database. So this is how the information is organized. And then we will see examples of each of these techniques. So depending, not all of the techniques will be used for every project. Different projects will have different level of detail. But as long as you high level, these are not like super complex. It's nothing to get into it. So once we know the basics of it, and a little bit memorization is needed. So somebody was asking for the interview or for the job, what should I prepare? Is this so much material or content? Where should we focus on? idea is that if you revise this couple of times, you will kind of remember um, if somebody is telling you about context diagram. Instead of context diagram, if they, if they ask you the question, which scope model have you used? You might get a little confused, but ultimately they're only asking you, have you drawn a current state diagram or a future state diagram? Even if you've not drawn it, have you seen it? Because current state, future state comes, sometimes comes from the project, sometimes from the program, sometimes it inherits from the portfolio. So. The current state, future state, the big roadmap diagram may already exist for your program. And you're, in your project, in your sprint, you're just making some minor changes. So you as a business analyst in your BRD, you're inheriting all these diagrams and you're just specifying in scope what is actually in scope for this little sprint that you're doing. That's all it is. But it may get framed as which scope models have you done and you have to know oh, what kind of questions you have. There could be very easy answers. So that's why terminology wise, we have to cover this just so that you won't get confused if somebody is asking you what kind of process models have you done. Process models just means a workflow diagram. It could be a flowchart, it could be a simulation diagram, and the data models also we will cover in detail. Okay, so this is just a high level overview slide. These are three different categories of models. All of them are different ways of visualizing and summarizing complex information. Uh, so as I said before, uh, uh, not all diagrams are needed for every project. You are like a craftsman, right? These are all the tools in your tool bag. You have to kind of decide uh, what level of detail is needed. Only for the pieces that are very, very complex, only that much you may have to draw a flowchart for. What is easy and self explanatory you have to do on the work table, right? So wherever we have, we find. So it's like a zoom lens. Wherever we need to zoom, only that part we blow up and others is simple enough for us to follow. So these are all different types of zoom lenses. And people may ask sometimes why we need a context diagram and a flowchart for the same project or for the same sprint, for the same exercise. Sometimes to attack the same problem, you may have to have different type of zoom lenses from different angles. So we will draw a simulation diagram also and we will draw a data flow diagram also. And both diagrams are going to give a slightly different perspective on the information. And it's for a, a complex piece of logic where we are having issues or production support issues or we are having trouble explaining to our stakeholders because a certain set of stakeholders is coming from auditing department, another set of stakeholders is coming from development department. So people are having hard time understanding each other's language. So we, we may draw multiple diagrams and then try to look at the same problem from a different perspective. That's why sometimes we have the benefit of using multiple diagrams. It aids in finding missing information. So as a business analyst, you're a little bit of a detective. You're trying to ensure all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. Anywhere where you have cracks, water will flow through, right? So these are all different techniques for you to ensure that um, our jigsaw puzzle is solid and tight and we don't have any breaks or gaps in our logic. So we'll be using different techniques. 